I'm Dr. Von Schneitzer. Welcome to my laboratory. We're making huge leaps in zombie research. The Walking Dead are not a work of black magic, neither are they a supernatural force. Zombies derive directly from the virus known as solanin. Solanin travels through the bloodstream to the brain through the initial entry wound. Once into the brain, it uses the frontal lobe cells for replication. There is no known source for solanum at this time, but it is known that once bitten, infection is 100% and the person will turn. In the event of a zombie attack, it is important to be ready. It's best to be trained in some sort of weapon. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is not recommended and should be only used as a last resort. Whatever weapon you choose, you should learn it to your best ability. What does this mean? Well, it means that you should learn your weapon inside and out. Train so that you can use your weapon in pure daylight or in complete darkness. If you have asthma, you should train during an asthma attack, because you should be able to fight in any given situation. No zombie's going to wait for you to have the ideal situation to fight back. So be prepared. Blunt objects are a difficult choice. The goal is to destroy the zombie brain. But as we know, the human skull is a very tough object and difficult to fracture. Clubs and sticks are great choices when trying to push a zombie out of the way. However, not efficient when trying to kill. A hammer, although easy to swing, is one of the more inefficient choices. The reason being the hammer has a small reach. This will be helpful if attacking one zombie, but in the event of a larger attack, the hammer will not do much good. If given the chance, the best choice would be the crowbar. The crowbar is light in nature, which makes it easy to swing. Due to the pointy end, you are able to stab the zombie through the eye socket and puncture the brain. Another advantage of this weapon is that you are able to pry open locked doors if needed. The blade, which can slice and dice, is preferred over blunt objects. You don't have to kill a zombie to stop a zombie. Unlike the bludgeon, which requires you to smash the skull, the blade can dismember the zombie. Simply by cutting the zombie's legs, you deter the chase. Of all the blades, the Japanese sword is the best choice. Its lightweight makes it easy to carry and swing, and the blades are forged to cut through the toughest material. If in a tight situation, a smaller blade is best, like a machete, due to its lightweight and blade length. You can pick up these at any army supply store. Many people look down on the bolt-action rifle. Due to the fact that you are only able to shoot one round at a time, the user is forced to be precise before pulling the trigger. Ammunition is readily available for the hunting rifle, and these require very basic and easy care. The semi-automatic rifles, such as an SKS, are amongst the top choices for a firearm. Like the hunting rifle, you are only able to fire one shot at a time. The shotgun can kill a zombie at close range with no problem. However, the further the range from the zombie and the gun, the less damage it will do due to the scatter of the pellets. Due to its light weight, the pistol should only be carried as a secondary weapon. This will come in handy when a zombie grabs you. All you have to do is put the pistol against the zombie's temple, pull the trigger, you will get a guaranteed kill and live to fight another day. Imagine that you're running from a mob of the undead. You turn down an alley and a single zombie blocks your path of escape. You attempt to attack with a close range weapon, but more than likely he'll notice you and he'll moan before you have a chance to kill. The moan will act as an alarm and alert the surrounding zombies to your whereabouts. A gunshot will act more as an alarm even than a moan. So what do you do? The same weapon that David used to slay the great Goliath. If used properly, this can kill with a skillful blow. However, a professional has a 10% chance of making such a shot. An amateur would be better off just throwing rocks. Zombies are impervious to poison. The blowgun is completely useless. The decision to grab this weapon in any time of need will only lead to certain death. Unless you're as good as Robin Hood, 
you probably won't deal any lethal blows. But don't let that deter you. The bow and arrow can be a very effective weapon. If equipped with a burning arrow, it can be a silent and very lethal weapon against the undead. Tight clothes and short hair will be your wisest decision when dealing with a zombie attack. The undead tend to reach and grab whatever they can. Wearing baggy clothes or trench coats will give the zombie a better chance of grabbing you. Remember, the key is survival, not trying to look like a badass while in battle. Be ready to be trapped in your home for long periods of time, as you don't know if or when help will come. You should stock up on all the ammunition for the guns that you own. But more important than ammunition is food and supplies. You should have plenty of water, for that is the fuel of the human body. Make sure that you have canned foods, especially fruits, that are stored within water. If you can, have a garden, for just in case of an attack, you'll have a fresh food supply on hand. But remember, eat the fresh garden vegetables first, for that will preserve the canned goods for longer. The best thing you can do is reinforce your doors and windows. This will only delay the zombies, however, and will not fully stop them. However, this may buy you enough time to survive until additional help shows up. So you heard the alarms, saw the smoke, and the attack has begun. It's time to finalize your preparedness. Fill your bathtub and sinks up with water. This will give you an extra supply of water and you never know when the water will be shut off. Lock all your windows and doors. Although glass windows will do little to stop the attack, the sound of breaking glass makes for an excellent alarm. Make sure you have your choice weapons with you at all times. Attach them to your body so you may use your hands when needed. Also, make sure to have an emergency evacuation plan and a pack of your gear and supplies ready to go in case of emergency. In the event that you may leave your stronghold, the roles of survival will change. Always be on the move. Don't allow yourself to become stationary. Don't run unless it's necessary, as running will cost you energy that will more than likely be needed down the road. Avoid urban areas. Urban areas carry the larger population, which means more meals for the undead. With all the buildings in an urban area, it will be easier for you to be cornered against a wall. In the event that you find yourself in an urban area, make sure you know the area. Don't find yourself stuck in a dead end, as this will be certain death. There's one last thing that I must tell you. If you know someone that has become infected, you have at best 23 hours before they change. The signs of zombie transformation can be broken down into hours. The first hour, they will begin to experience pain and discoloration. In the eighth hour, they will begin to experience a high increased fever, dementia, and a loss of muscular coordination. In the sixteenth hour, they will go into a coma and their heart will stop. Now at the few hours later, at the 23rd hour, that is when the victim will reanimate into one of the undead.